Welcome to part two of the Open Coop build series. In part two, we'll be talking about the grain bin truss system. We'll go over metal selection, prefabricated trusses, and where you can find them for affordable price, and also the type of grain bin, where you can find them, and how to put it onto the truss system. Hope you enjoyed this build series. Be sure to check out our website, opencoop.net, where you can find the forum so we can share ideas and production methods and also access to the plans, which it will be a downloadable PDF link. These are the metal trusses that we use to support the grain bin on the back of the building. Um, we purchased them used for $50 each and it just speeds up the process uh, significantly over building and welding your own. Um, you can search for bar joist trusses, metal trusses, and set the trusses on the leg pieces that we fabricated. Here's that leg piece, and you can see the flat steel on top to give it a little bit more support. One important thing to remember is that when you line your trusses up on the legs, you want the webbing, the zigzag webbing, you want it to end right above the leg. That way, that's all of the transferred load gets right onto the edge of the grain bin truss support system. Once cut to size, you can weld them to the top of the grain bin legs. And then we're also gonna add some supports to the trusses on either side, which you can find on the manual. Uh, trusses are designed to have downward load bearing. So this is gonna help from the truss system shift and uh, strengthen it from side to side. And you'll feel it that it's super wiggly and you can just kind of keep adding stuff. So we do a brace on two sides, an X brace in the middle like this. Um, and that's gonna brace it plenty from forward and backward movement. Here's a shot of another angled support piece that I added in to just add a little bit more strength on the corners and that really helped sure everything up. So next we're gonna weld in the two legs that hold the grain bin up. And I have the grain bin offset for a specific reason that I'll talk about in a second here. Um, you're gonna to wanna to space out these legs based on the width of the grain bin legs that you use. And we have a loader tractor so we can just set it right on. And these specific grain bin legs have a bottom plate that's bolted on when they're when they come so I just weld that bottom plate directly on and if I need to take the bin off or on for any reason I can just unbolt it um, so it's not completely permanent and here's an overall shot when it's complete so the components are Obviously you have your four legs. It's really important, uh, and this can all be bolted on too. It's just um, drilling takes a lot longer than welding and we have no plans on selling or taking these apart. And if we do, uh, it's because we'll stop doing this and we'll just cut them up and take them to scrap. So it's really important that you have cut these cut pieces so you have more welding surface around. If you just do from here to here, you're just gonna have these two little welds right here and right here, and that's gonna break off and uh, pretty immediately. Um, and you don't have to get fancy with this. I mean, like, you know, this doesn't line up. Um, it's gonna work just fine. It's gonna hold this up. You probably put two grain bins. So when you put your grain bin in, depending on what size you get, um, if you were to orient your grain bin where the opening, so here's where the unloader is going to be, and here's where the pipe's going to come out. It's important that you give yourself enough space, um, the distance from the building from the grain bin. If you were to orient it that way and put the grain bin in the middle, if we were to orient it this way, we could put the grain bin in the middle, which would help you know transfer the load more sensibly. <clears throat> you wouldn't have enough distance to get from there inside the building, you have way too much of a curve up, which is gonna reduce your flow rate on your, grain, on your grain, meaning it's gonna take longer, might double the amount of time from 
10 to 15 minutes to 20 to 30 minutes. So that's pretty huge. The other thing is, if you did do it right there, you'd have to come in the building and you'd have pipe right here. Um, and so you'd lose some feeder space by doing it that way. So what we did is just mounted it on the side. So it does, you know, weigh a little bit more over here. Um, and so we'll come up with the grain bin with the pipe like this where my finger is and you'll arch it around, you'll curve it around and that's what's going to give your, your uh, makeup for that, how close we are to the building. Next we're going to weld our pull bar support. The front and back could really be done at any point in the project, it doesn't have to happen now, you could even do it in the beginning. But this particular support hinges and folds up and down and it hinges off of a three quarters bolt. Um, all this is going to be in the diagram. The purpose of this is this is the end that we pull from and we also have the double doors that we load birds up for processing. And we wanted a lot of space for in and out access when we pick up birds. So we didn't want this to be fixed in the air and you have to walk over it every single time you want to get in and out of it. So basically when the, when the building is not moving, it just falls down to the ground. And when you have your strap attached to it, we use a um, cable on either end. When you start to pull and put pressure on it, it will actually lift up um, as you pull it and, um, and lift up enough so it doesn't pull on the ground or scratch the ground up. We didn't get a shot of this, unfortunately, but on the trailing end of the building, we added a, what we call a sway bar, just to take some of the load. This might not be necessary, but every once in a while we do pull the house by the grain bin end for a variety of different reasons. You can see though it's not the best because if you have a full grain bin, it can kind of dig in. Um, maybe there's some ways that someone could figure out around this. But essentially it's just you're taking some flat pit plate welding it to the ski part of the of the leg that we bent and then we just slide in another three by three square tube that spans the width of the building so it's pretty simple and it just adds a little bit more support uh, when the house is moving if you do ever have to pull it from that end that concludes part two of the build series upcoming in part three we'll actually install the automatic feed bin system itself the water system and any other accessories that we like to use on our house scene systems. Thank you. We'd like to thank the Northeast SARE, the Sustainable Agriculture Research and Education for help sponsoring this project. Without their help, this open source video series would not be possible. Thank you and we hope you enjoy the video.